We're with Mike Yagley at Cobra Golf, and Mike, we always hear when new products come out that there's been a lot of testing that goes on and the innovations that go into you know the technologies to make the ball go farther, to make the club better. The question is really, what is testing? What, what goes on with behind the scenes when testing goes on? That is a darn good question. Now, my wife and my friends, they think that uh, all we do all day is just go play golf, right? You don't? No, oh. no, no. Um, the truth is we can find out an awful lot about how the club is going to perform, how it's going to sound, whether it's durable or not, you know, does it work, before the golf club even leaves the building. We can find out almost more accurately what's going to happen with all those things indoors as opposed to outdoors. Now we do need to go outdoors because you want to know how it's going to interact with the turf. You want to know how the ball is really going to fly, mm -hmm. right, when you hit it. You want to know how it's really going to sound when it's outside, okay? So we have to do both. But going back to the indoors, um, it, it isn't all just going out and whacking golf balls. <laughs> that's a, box a shame. Of, that's a shame. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> a box of golf, golf club heads will come in and uh, they get scattered into a bunch of different places. Uh, some of them will go into air cannons, and we will literally pound the heck out of that golf club to make sure that the face doesn't fail, the crown doesn't fail, the weights mm -hmm. stay on, or the hosel system stays together. If there's joints between dissimilar materials, you got to pound to make sure those joints are okay. Um, literally, more than 3,000 hits at oh. over 100 miles an hour. So it's a lot of hits. That's just one aspect of the testing. And then some of those heads might go into... Um, say size, CT, um, COR, mm -hmm. into a robot room, right? And, and all those are very different things. And we're looking for whether or not it conforms. Um, I'm sure many of your people have seen the, the CT test, which is hold the club and drop a metal pendulum on it, yes. right? Um, heads go through that process. Robot, put in the robot, set it up at very specific conditions and hit, we set up at 105 miles an hour going up at it about two degrees, let's say, and then square at impact. Put it off your swing, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, what's well, a little slower than my swing, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to insult yeah, you. That's all right. You didn't. Um, and then hit it in several locations on the face because we want to make sure that that face is going to give us the proper amount of resilience, which is literally, you know, ball speed. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that from a mass property standpoint, um, we're getting the consistency in the ball speed, the launch angle, and the spin that we're looking for. Um, so the robot is very, very useful from a head testing standpoint. Uh, we then, if it's the club we're looking at, we'll do an awful lot of player testing internally in our hit bay downstairs, where we'll hit a club versus, say, our previous model and a couple of appropriate uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. And that starts to tell you, okay, how does a whole club work, right? Robot kind of for head testing and the player testing for whole club tests. Um, so we do an, an awful lot of that, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. There are so many considerations when you're designing a golf club. You've got to make sure that you're going to get the performance that you want for the player type. Let's say it's a, a game improvement club, mm -hmm. so the F7 driver. We kind of know roughly the conditions at which the players are going to hit that club in terms of speed, attack, face angle, all of that. Um, but that particular club is a is pretty broad right. in the spectrum of players. So we have to be concerned with how it's going to perform based on its mass properties and its resilience. How's it going to sound? The sound is so huge. Um, you dropped a frequency on a club head, the primary frequency on a club head by a couple hundred hertz, and it goes from sounding really, really good to sounding like someone just hit a tin garbage can with a baseball bat. And you know what, that, even when a, te uh, you know, a player goes into a store and hits a bunch of clubs, that's one of the biggest things that the takeaway is early on is how does it sound? Yes. You know, so just like what you're saying there, that's something that as consumers you go into a store and you could hit five different clubs and the sound is something that immediately jumps out at you. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so critical. Um, so we spend an extensive amount of time, and actually, I would say even before we test, right, we've got a great research team, also is in my group, we've got a couple of guys that really understand how a golf club works in terms of the construction, the materials, how it's put together. 
they ultimately take the CAD file from the design team or from the innovation team who's mm -hmm. ever giving them the design and uh, they mesh that thing up and they put it in what we call a finite element analysis and uh, they can pretty accurately predict how that club's going to sound before you even make one. So I'm backing way up, way before testing. Okay. Okay. Because, like I said, a couple hundred hertz on a golf club doesn't sound like much, but you go from, say, 3,600 hertz to, say, 33 or 3,200 hertz, and you go from sounding really, really good to, oh my God, what is that thing? Um, so we have to diligently make sure, as I was saying earlier, that the convergence of the sound of the club, the mechanical feel of the club, the mass properties of the club, the durability of the club, mm -hmm. ultimately the launch characteristics with the ball off that club, all that has to converge. Haven't even talked about how much does it cost, right? Right. So from an engineering standpoint, we've got to be cognizant of all of those things at the same time. So testing is super critical on four of those five major things. Does it sound good? Is it durable? Does it perform the way we want it to perform? Does it have the mass properties that that we need it to have? You know, this could have been a lot shorter if you just said, you know, when we test, we play with cannons, robots, and then go hit golf balls. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. what it is, right? Yeah. No, that is, they, they, yeah. obviously there's a lot of extensive things that goes into it. And like you said, just a little tweak, you're talking about with the sound earlier, just a little tweak changes everything. And that goes into the entire club head design as well. Just a little tweak here or there oh. can really change the way the club head's going to perform. It's incredible. You know, I, and I left out one of the most critical things that you hear an awful lot of people talking about right now. And we've spent a lot of time making sure that we get this right. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned mass properties, right? But literally, that box of heads that come in, right? Some going to robots, some going to durability. Um, most of them will go through our physical property testing, where we test the loft, the lie, and then the supercritical mass properties. You hear a lot of talk about center gravity and moment of inertia. Well, those things are, they're real, and they're extremely <laughs> important properties. Um, it looks like a simple test. I mean, literally, it's it's a what's called a torsional pendulum. You put the club on this pendulum, and you spin it in a couple of different axes, mm -hmm. and the rotational period um, is highly dependent upon the moment of inertia on that axis. Okay. So you put in a couple different orientations and very quickly you can find out, okay, where is the center of gravity? What are the moments of inertia about the critical axes? Hugely important to the performance of a golf club. So how long, roughly, does it take from when you get a box of club heads to come in that goes mm -hmm. through all of that testing to when it's like, all right, this is going to be what our final product is going to be, go make it? Uh, I'd say Box to end of test is probably about two weeks. Okay. Okay. But quite often we'll go through all those tests and we're like, hmm, it's durable, mass properties are good, doesn't sound very good. Okay. So now we've got to make some tweaks to, say, internal ribs mm -hmm. or thickness of some of the materials or locations of some of the joints. We have to do something to make it sound better. That will affect everything else. It's kind of like a water balloon. You squeeze that water balloon, and it's going to stick out somewhere else. So you fix the sound, and then you find out, wow, the mass properties aren't exactly what we wanted them to be. So we'll start all over again. Exactly. <laughs> we, so we'll probably go through two or three iterations for a typical golf club before we you know, get to what is the production head. So get the heads in, two weeks of testing, make some changes. A month later, we get some new parts, another couple weeks of testing month later get some more parts <laughs> right and do that maybe two or three times and ultimately you come up with you know what is in our world perfection there's the golf club there's the f7 driver and sounds that's, good that's the one feels that gets good sent out and on the shelves yeah exactly